Friday night can only mean one thing, and that's predictions for the upcoming weekend's football games. NFL and college football both have an action-packed schedule this weekend. Eli Hauser and I will sit down and share all our NFL predictions for this weekend, and we will pick some college games to make predictions on. It's going to be a great first football weekend in December. This is all the talk, all the sports. I'm Gary Wenzel. Here is Eli Hauser now. We're going to start with college football predictions before we move the, the NFL. We only got three college games that I'd like to make predictions for. So let's start off with this one. This one might not look as good ranking-wise and uh, record-wise, but I think this is actually going to shape up to be a pretty good game, and that is Texas A&M traveling to Auburn. Auburn lost West last week to Alabama. Who do you have, Texas A&M or Auburn? Uh, I'm going to take A&M in this one. They, they had an ugly game in that Alabama game, and everyone knows it. It was not pretty at all. But that uh, game against Florida was very impressive. I mean, it was a few weeks ago, but Florida's a solid team. They have a very nice offense this year, and I think Texas A&M is just a better team at this point in the year. Yeah, I'm going to go with Texas A&M as well. Uh, Texas A&M, they have their one loss, obviously, coming to Alabama. But when you rank teams with and against Alabama and you look at their games, most teams are going to lose to Alabama. In fact, every team this year that has played Alabama has lost. So even in that game, they Texas A&M didn't look good. Auburn didn't look good in, uh, against Alabama either. But the win that impressed me was Texas A&M over Florida. Uh, that showed me that they truly belong. I don't think they belong in the top five. But uh, I think this team wins over Auburn, who's a little shaken up after that uh, heavy defeat to their biggest rival uh, on the planet, which is Alabama. So I have Texas A&M. We'll go down to a Big Ten game, two ranked teams in this one, Indiana and Wisconsin. Um, this one was close for me. I was actually thinking about taking Wisconsin here, but I took Indiana. They, they just looked really solid this year against tougher opponents, too. Like, Ohio, that Ohio State game, they, they hung in there. And Ohio State is, I mean, as, if the season ended today, they'd be in the playoffs. And it's not easy to keep up with those high offensive teams. And they did. So I'm going to take Indiana in this one. Yeah, Indiana, they, I'm going to take Indiana as well. From what I've seen from Wisconsin isn't enough. They've had three games canceled. They've played three games. They've lost one of them to Northwestern, who then last week lost to Michigan State. First of all, I want to say the Big Ten's a mess. Anyone can beat anyone at this point in time right now. We've seen that across the entire Big Ten with every team uh, getting a shocking win here and there. But Wisconsin, they've dominated their two wins, but is two wins enough against, uh, I think, Illinois was the first one. That was way back when. And then Michigan, and Michigan does not look good at all right now. Probably the worst team in the Big Ten in my opinion. So Indiana looks good. Here's a fun fact. Wisconsin is favored to win this game. According to ESPN's FPI, 84.1. So that's insane. They're a 13 and a half favorite over Indiana. That's insane as well. I think a lot of people are still underestimating this Indiana team. Like you mentioned against Ohio State, they really held uh, their own against Ohio State, battled back when the game seemed over. I think they were down by 21 at one point. They lost by a touchdown. Indiana has won the turnover margin in every game they have played this year. They win the turnover margin again against Wisconsin. They've got a solid defense. They need to work on their offense. But I think the defense stops Graham Mertz and the Badgers, and Indiana wins the football game. Our last game for college football is uh, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers and the BYU Cougars. College game day is headed there. They will be there tomorrow morning. This game was originally supposed to be Coastal Carolina at Liberty. Liberty, I think, is ranked 20-something, 20 22nd maybe. The college game day was still going to go there. Liberty had some COVID-19 issues uh, break out within the program. They had to cancel, but – Shout out to the Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears. They went out and scheduled an even better opponent in the BYU Cougars. Uh, if you watched my last podcast about this, BYU needs a big win. This is their chance to get a big win. They have one of the worst 
strength of schedules in college football. And that's why they're ranked at number 13 and not uh, in the top seven like a lot of people, including myself, think they should be. So BYU or Coastal Carolina, Eli? Um, I think this can be a good game, but I'm going to still take BYU. Uh, this obviously is a huge game for them. Uh, Coastal Carolina, the only thing that worries me about them is their consistency. I mean, they haven't played the best competition, but I think they'll keep it close, and I think they lose by three. Yeah, and I have BYU as well. I know we, we took all three same teams. But from what I've seen from Coastal Carolina, I just don't trust. Like you said, the teams they've played in the Sun Belt Conference are not – the uh, same caliber as you would see at a higher level of football. Then again, BYU hasn't really played anyone either. But uh, I really love BYU's offense, and I think that'll get the job done. I have BYU actually winning by two possessions here. I think if this was Liberty versus Coastal Carolina, I would have taken Liberty. I mean, excuse me, Coastal Carolina, but BYU is too explosive on the offensive uh, side of the ball. They got the quarterback, Zach Wilson, who is in Heisman contention right now as we speak. Um, he's going to go high in the draft, I think, next year. So I have BYU winning that game. So let's move out of college football and transition in the NFL with our first game on Sunday in a divisional rivalry between the Saints and the Falcons. Who do you have in that one? Um, I'm going to take the Saints, but it, I, I worry about the Falcons. Their offense is just way too inconsistent without Julio Jones. And – this, I mean, you can't really say the Saints are a consistent offense with Taysom Hill, but I think they're just – they're defensively, they're better. They're more consistent, so I'm going to take the Saints. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints as well. I think this is a pretty easy pick. Uh, the Falcons usually do play the Saints pretty good, but I think the Saints have their number. Obviously, Taysom Hill, uh, my the, Brayton Hemmelberg, he's in the league. He has Alvin Kamara. He texts me basically every Sunday when they're playing that – uh. He doesn't like how Kamara is not getting all the targets that he would get if Breeze is in. Uh, so I think that has a big effect on the Saints if they were playing someone good, but the Falcons now. So I'm going to take the Saints. Lions and Bears, another divisional game. Um, Matt Stafford's questionable for this game. So that if he doesn't play, that Detroit offense is going to be awful. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Galladay, questionable yeah. as well. Yep. And the Bears defense has been really good this year. Their offense has been shaky, but the defense keeps them in games. And if the, I think they're going to be able to take advantage of that if the Lions are missing all these pieces. So I'm going to take the Bears. Interesting. The Bears are on, a, I think, a five-game skid right now. They started the season 5-1, and one, lost their last five games. Last week against Green Bay was not looking good. But I'm going to go with the Lions on the other hand. They absolutely got annihilated against the Houston Texans. I think they bounced back. I think that you're going to see a close game here between uh, two average teams not headed on the right track. But I'm going to go the other way with the Lions. Two eight and three teams, Browns and Titans. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, I think it's going to play out similar to how, how the, when the Browns played the uh, Colts. It was, it was an ugly game. It was a defensive battle, and then the Browns kind of just took off with the lead, with the small lead. And I, I think that Derrick Henry, coming off a monster week, there's just no way the Browns can afford for him to do that again. So I think they shut him down and makes Ryan Tannehill throw the ball, and the Browns win. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Browns as well. I love this Browns team. I texted all you guys, hey, I'm a Browns fan now. Uh, something about them makes me really like them. I like Baker Mayfield. I like his style. They got weapons, Nick Chubb. They got Jarvis Landry. Uh, they got Kareem Hunt. Two good running backs there. I think the Browns take care of business and secure themselves a playoff spot this week. Bengals and Dolphins, this is going to be an uh, absolute not great game. Uh, this one's pretty easy to me. I'm going to take Miami. With Joe Burr going out for the year, Cincinnati last week against New York, really couldn't get anything going on offense. Miami, no matter who's a quarterback, Tua or Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think they should take care of the Bengals pretty easily. So I'm going to take the Dolphins. Yeah, quick answer here. Uh, pretty simple. Miami Dolphins. Jaguars and Vikings. Jaguars are 1-10. and ten. Yeah, they haven't looked good. It's pretty much the same situation. Minnesota's looked good recently. And they should be getting Adam Thielen back from COVID this week. So I'm going to take the Vikings. 
Yeah, I think this one's pretty easy and straightforward as well. I'm going to go with the Vikings. The 0-11 Jets versus the 6-5 Raiders. Did the Jets get their first win? I'm going to say they do. Wow. I, I know it's crazy. Josh Jacobs isn't playing, already been ruled out. Uh, Nelson Aguilar most likely w- won't play, and that's been Derek Carr's safety blanket this year. The Jets have been decent against the run, I guess. I mean, that's been their best part of their defense. But um, I don't think the Raiders are going to be able to put up many points without Jacobs. They're going to have to depend on Waller and maybe Ruggs, which he's been very inconsistent this year. And last week, the Jets, the Jets got down to the red zone quite a few times, which was impressive on that Miami defense that has been so great these past few weeks. I'm going to say New York gets their first win this week. That is actually very shocking. Uh, I was expecting a hard no there, but no. I'm going to go with the Raiders, despite Josh Jacobs being out, but I think Henry Ruggs, and Derek Carr get that offense moving. I don't think the Jets have what it takes, but I think this game might be closer than a lot of people think, but I do think the Raiders pull it out. Colts and Texans. Uh, I'm going to – Deshaun Watson has been in an absolute tear this season, but he just lost Will Fuller, which scares me so much. I just – and the Colts – their Colts are hot right now. I don't know how you can bet against them, so I'm going to take the Colts. Yeah, the Colts are really hot right now. Uh, Two weeks ago against Green Bay, they looked amazing. They have looked really good, and I think they win the AFC South, and they get a win this week. Rams and Cardinals, this is going to be a good NFC West showdown that has a lot of play in uh, where the NFC West goes as far as standings. Uh, This is going to be a good game, Uh, but I'm going to take the Rams. Uh, That defense has been playing out of their minds lately. And last week, New England really exposed how to, like, contain Kyler Murray. I mean, he, he did not have a good game, and they only scored 17 points. Patriots ended up getting a win because of it. And I think that Rams offense is better than the Patriots offense, and the defense is similar. I think it's, it's going to be a low-scoring one, and I'm going to take the Rams. That's actually kind of uh, – I don't know how to put that, but you don't really hear the words low-scoring when you think of the Cardinals this season. But uh, I have the Rams as well. The Cardinals are starting to scare me a little bit. They're starting to let off the gas here ever since that big win in Seattle. I have the Rams as well. Giants, Seahawks. Uh, This one should be interesting. I think New York, without Daniel Jones, uh, will stay in the game early. But it's not going to last. That Seattle offense is lethal. Last week, uh, outside of DK Metcalf, they were slowed down by Philly. Slowed down. Not, they were not shut down at all. They still put up 23 points. And, I mean, that all, Russell Wilson is a top-two quarterback in football with elite weapons. So I think it should be no problem for Seattle. Yeah, I'm actually going to take the Giants in this one. I know this is going to be very shocking. I think it's going to be one of those sleepy, slow starts. And if they even get started, typical – well, not typical, but what I saw – again, what we saw against – Buffalo for the Seahawks. I think we're going to see uh, uh, against the Giants, and I think the Giants shock the world here and get a win and take commanding lead over the NFC East. Uh, I think this is going to be a close game, but I have the Giants coming out on top. Um, obviously, I think it's Colt McCoy who is in at quarterback. Is that right? So, yeah, Daniel Jones out. Daniel Jones is such a good quarterback, but I have the Giants winning this game. Patriots and Chargers. Patriots on a little bit of a – Come back here. Yeah, I'm going to take New England. They've, I mean, they've looked good lately. They're fighting for a playoff spot. They're going to leave it all out in the field. And the Chargers, they just – the decision-making that goes through that organization just isn't – it isn't clicking right now. And I, th- I think that, that New England defense should hold or limit Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, 10 targets in the last six games. That is just insane. And I think it's going to be another low-scoring one, but I'm going to take New England. Yeah, I'm going to take New England. And this is something New England's not used to. They're not used to people not talking about them. When, uh, when you're talking at, about teams right now, you're hearing the Steelers pop up a lot. You're hearing the Chiefs on the AFC side pop up a lot. You're hearing the Seahawks, all those good teams. But the Patriots have like not never had this attention. 
And uh, I think they start to sleepily make their way back in. And I actually think they might secure a playoff spot starting with a win this week against the Chargers. Uh, Let's move down to the Sunday night game, Broncos and Chiefs. I have no idea why this is the Sunday night game, uh, but Broncos and Chiefs, Sunday night football. Uh, this, the Chiefs should take care of the Broncos relatively easily. The Broncos are getting their quarterback, their quarterbacks back. But, I mean, that Kansas City offense is just too good. They, there's no way the Broncos keep up. I'm going to take Kansas City in a blowout. Yeah, I agree. Kansas City – Last week against the Buccaneers, Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes, the best duo in football right now, receiver and quarterback-wise. That offense is electric. The best offense I have ever seen in my lifetime, I think, right now. They're playing the best football that the Chiefs have seen as the season ends down. But the only thing that scares me a little bit is about the Chiefs is the defense. Uh, they let the Buccaneers back into that game last week. Uh, when I think they could have easily locked it out early in the first half. But uh, two Monday night games, a doubleheader, starting with Washington and the Steelers. Um, I think the Steelers should take this one relatively easily. The, the football team, their defense has really come alive these last few weeks. But that offense, is just it's too on and off for me. I, I like Terry McLaurin. I like Antonio Gibson. I don't like their uh, what they have at the quarterback position. I mean, it's a little weak there, so I'm going to take the Steelers. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers as well. Um, I, if you follow me on social media, you hear me talking about the Steelers and their easy schedule. King Klein doesn't <laughs> like me talking about that. If you follow him on social media, you saw his response to my story. So that was awesome. I have the Steelers in this one. Washington's not going to keep up. But I think the Steelers, uh, I do not think they finish undefeated. Uh, I wanted to add something in, and now I totally forgot. I got sidetracked with that social media thing. If I think of it, I'll come back to it. Bills and 49ers. I'm going to take the Bills. They have really played up to their competition this year, which is really surprising because, I mean, they tend to play down to their competition as well. I mean, you look back at that New England game, and New England was right in it. I I don't know if that says something about New England or that says something about Buffalo, but uh, their defense has been – great this year and Josh Allen's just electric like you can't it's really hard to defend him because you always have that threat of him running or throwing to an elite weapon like Stephon Diggs so I'm gonna take the Bills yeah I'm gonna go with the Bills as well in this one Bills have looked really good this season I think they hand the Steelers their first loss but I want to talk about the 49ers here this team has dealt with so much Re, uh, revolving around injuries in essence uh, in a tough NFC West. I think they would have com- uh, competed this year and it would have been a four team race if they wouldn't have uh, been dealing with the injuries that they have. So shout out to the 49ers. They've made the best of this uh, injury struck in season at five and six with what they've had to deal through. Uh, that's pretty good. Before we get into the last prediction, I do remember what I was going to say. Uh, you and I were talking earlier on FaceTime earlier today about and you mentioned Antonio Gibson and the Washington Redskins uh that Antonio Gibson went in the 16th round of our NFL draft and he's been started many weeks I think on King Klein's team uh who's in first place right now so Antonio Gibson went in the 16th round I bet that won't happen next year Cowboys and Ravens Tuesday night football for the second time this year um the Ravens hopefully will get their quarterback back so I'm going to take Baltimore. That defense is still a top five defense in football. And when you, when you get your weapons back, like Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins, and Mark Ingram, including Lamar Jackson, I mean, it's a huge boost. They only lost the Steelers by a few points. So I think Baltimore should take this one pretty easily. Yeah, they lost to, quote, the best team in the NFL right now by five points with, like, no one playing that's relatively good there for the Ravens. I think they take care of business at the Cowboys. When we talk about the Cowboys, I'm literally sick and tired of talking about the same things on the Cowboys because it's the same thing every week. They show up and disappoint uh, the fans and everyone around the NFL. So it's been a great in-depth uh, predictions that we've had here. It's going to be an exciting weekend of college football, even stretching into uh, college football and NFL, even stretching into early next week. So thank you so much for coming Gary, on, Eli. Gary. 
Now in an hour, we got a NFC basketball draft going on. You want to go over the Eagles and the Packers game? You know what? We should. You know why that is? Because on ESPN, I have the Packers as my favorite team. So it jumps them to the top, but I didn't want to pick them as a 425 game. Um, so, crap, I forgot both of our favorite teams. Let's do the Eagles and Packers. All right. So I'm taking Philly. Backs up against the wall. This is when they typically play their best football. Carson Wentz, his job is in serious jeopardy right now. And, I mean, that defense last week, outside of DK Metcalf, they played very well. They got to Russell Wilson. They made some huge stops. And I think, I think you match up similarly against the Packers as you do the Seahawks. They both have elite quarterbacks, an elite receiver weapon, and then a great running back and weak defenses. So I, I think the Eagles get a win here. It's going to be a close one, but I'm going to take Philly. That is amazing. I have been very impressed with the Eagles, and I'm not even going to lie. What I saw against Seattle was amazing. I was pleasantly surprised with the Eagles. The offense is what scares me. Carson Wentz needs to get things in order or else Jalen Hurts is going to come in and steal his job and take the franchise quarterback position. I have the Green Bay Packers in this one. They have receiver depth. They have a good running back and they have a good quarterback. The Packers defense scares me a little bit, but I think the Packers defense is a little bit better than the Eagles offense. And I have the Packers winning this one. So what do you know? We both take our favorite teams in that one this time. Thank you for watching this uh, All the Talk, All the Sports podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.